one who has sent down upon his slave Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the Quran, and he has made it upright without any imperfection, without any defect. The one who has absolutely no partner, doesn't share any of his kingdom with anyone. He is the only king and owner of everything that exists. He doesn't have any child. He is the one who has control over life and death. He is the one who can give life. He is the one who controls when a person may die. He is the one who has spread out all of his blessings all over the entire universe. Some of which are obvious and clear, and some of which are a blessing in disguise. And some of which are a blessing in disguise. He is the one who has created the paradise, Jannah, specifically and specially for human beings. Of all the living things of the world, none of them will go to Jannah except the human beings. Plants and animals, they're here for this world. Allah has created Jannah for human beings. Allah has honored the human beings with all these blessings. So He is the one to whom all praise and thanks is due. فَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ عِلْمًا وَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الذي فضلنا على كثير من عباده المؤمنين سورة النمل the ant سورة number 27 Allah says we have indeed given Dawood and Sulaiman and we say عليهما السلام peace be upon them both we have indeed given them knowledge and they said الحمد لله they said Thanks and praise belongs to Allah. They genuinely, naturally thanked Allah. And then they said, the one who has given us favors that so many other of his believing people could have gotten, but he gave them to us. They realized that they are no better than others they realize that this is a huge favor that they received from Allah. And they admitted and recognized that there are many other people among the worshippers of Allah, among the believers. There are many other people who could have received the same thing. So they were so grateful to Allah for what He gave them. Prophet Adam, I mean Prophet Dawood السلام, and his son Sulaiman السلام, who are both Prophet and a King. King Dawood. King Solomon. Later on, a little bit further in the surah, actually in the next ayah, وَوَرِثَ سُلَيْمَانُ دَاوُودُ وَقَالَ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ عُلِّمْنَا مَنْطِقَ الطَّيْرِ وَأُوْتِيْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْفَضْلُ الْمُبِينَ Sulaiman a.s. he inherited from Dawood a.s. and he was the king after his father Dawood a.s. And he informed people that we have been taught. You see, Allah says he gave knowledge to Dawood and Sulaiman. Sulaiman says we have been taught to understand things that nobody else can understand, including animals. This is a miracle of Allah, and he is informing the people. This is indeed something that clearly comes from Allah. This is not from me. This is not from me. He didn't boast about it. He said this is from Allah. And so the next half page tells us that when Sulaiman was able to hear the ant speak, Sulaiman heard the announcement that an ant made when he was moving forward with his army. The ant made an announcement. He said, Oh, all you ants, people of this ant hill, go back inside, go inside your homes so that Sulaiman and his army don't crush you on accident because they're all human beings, they're not going to see all the ants so go away so that they don't crush you on ac by accident when he heard that, when he heard that announcement Sulaiman salam, did he turn to his people and said I'm so awesome, I'll be able to understand the ants 
No. He turned to Allah. He didn't turn to his people and boast about it. He turned to Allah and he said, Rabbi awzi'ani. Rabbi, my master, put control over me. Put me under control. So that what? Awzi'ani an ashkura ni'matak. Put me under control. Poke me and force me to always be thankful for your blessings. In other words, never be boastful about what I can do. Always be thankful for what Allah has given me. Always be thankful for the blessings that you have given me. And my parents. Who were Sulaiman's parents? Dawood alayhi salam. Right? And we don't know the name of his mother. Allah, uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam is thinking of his parents also. Allah push me. Ya Allah push me to be thankful for all the blessings you've given me and my parents. And that I do good deeds. That whatever I do is pleasing to you. I don't care to please the people. I don't care to show off for the people. I care to please you. This is Sulaiman speaking, alayhi salam. The king who had a huge kingdom, who had armies under him, who could control the jinns and speak to the birds, and birds were part of his army. The one who had a magnificent palace. He says, Oh Allah, what I care about is that you are pleased with me. I don't care about pleasing the people. And he finished off by saying, And Ya Allah, make me among the righteous people who go to Jannah. Because he realized all the blessings he gets in this world are temporary. If Allah is not pleased with me, I'm going to get nothing in the hereafter. So he made dua to Allah for Allah to be pleased with him. And through his mercy to be able to go to Jannah. And so he said in Arabic, رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ وَعَلَى وَالِدَيْ وَأَنْ أَعْمَلَ صَالِحًا تَرْضَاهُ وَأَدْخِلْنِي بِرَحْمَتِكَ فِي عِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ And we should all say Ameen because this is a dua that I've just explained. Later on you flip a page, a bird called Hudhud comes back from a faraway land that Sulaiman has never been before, alayhi salam. And he comes to Sulaiman and he says, you know what I found? That place, they have a queen and she has such a huge throne. A magnificent throne. And they worship the sun instead of worshiping Allah. Did Sulaiman say, you mean she has a better throne than mine? Off with your head. Kill the bird for saying that somebody else has a better throne than mine. No. Actually, he said, she has a better throne than Allah. He didn't compare her throne to his throne. He said, Allah is the one who has the most awesome throne. He didn't care about himself. He didn't get offended. She has an awesome throne. So what? It's just a blessing of Allah. So then, that queen sends a gift to Sulaiman. And when they come with the gift to Sulaiman, she's not coming herself. She's just sending. So the messengers come to him with the gift. He says, are you trying to give me money? You giving me money? What Allah gives me is so much better than whatever you have. Allah is the one who gives me. Always. One page, one ayah after another. مَا آتَانِيَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا آتَاكُمْ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ بِهَدِيَّتِكُمْ تَفْرَحُونَ Don't be so proud of what you have in this world. What Allah has is so much better. I don't need the gift. I don't need the gift. Rather, tell you, go back to your people and tell them, if they continue to worship the sun, they're going to be in trouble with me. Nobody worships the sun. He cared about the message. He cared about them being Muslims. Subhanallah. So when the queen understood, he's not going to take money. He doesn't care about money. He doesn't care about thrones or palaces or anything. He has amazing blessings from Allah. But what he cares about is to please Allah. So when she came, she became Muslim. And all her nation, they also became Muslim and they stopped worshipping the sun. One last piece is so important. This is probably the most important out of this small passage from Surah An-Naml. When the messengers go back to tell the queen that they didn't accept the gift of the money and we should not worship the sun, when the messengers go back, then Suleiman, he tells his people, which one of you is going to bring me her throne before they get here. Now think about this for a second. 
There's no airplanes, trains, trucks, whatever. You can't deliver. There's no um, Amazon delivery to bring the throne. And even if there was, it's probably too big to bring it. He's saying, who's going to bring me her throne before she gets here? And we said this is a faraway land. He hasn't been before. One of the jinns, the jinns, they have powers that we don't have. He said, I'll bring it to you before this meeting is over. And then, someone who had knowledge. So you see Allah is saying, the one who has knowledge is even better than the ones who have special powers. And he said, and this, this jinn was عِفْرِيتُ min al jinn, a very powerful jinn. He said, I'll bring you the throne before this meeting is over. But someone who had knowledge said, I will actually be able to bring you the throne before you even blink. So he blinked, and the throne was right in front of him. Alayhi salam, Sulaiman. Now, you have to picture this. Like, imagine I'm talking right now, and a big throne just shows up here in the gym. This is, this is something that we have a hard time believing nowadays. People say, I'll believe it when I see it. Really? Teleport like this? I'll believe it when I see it. But this is something that we know for a fact. When you talk to Allah, when you make dua to Allah, when you thank Allah for all the blessings you have, He will show you things that are beyond what anybody would have seen. Once you realize how powerful Allah is, all those stories of the past, they make perfect sense. And so Sulaiman, when he saw the throne in front of him, what did he say? He said, wow, this is a test from Allah. Now this is the, the highest level of favors that you can think of. That he, some of his people are able to teleport things to him. This is beyond anything that you can think of all the power that he has. And he says, this is a test from Allah. And I'm being tested to see if I'm going to be thankful or if I'm going to ignore and look away from the blessings of Allah. He could have said, look at me, what I can do. That's not being thankful to Allah. No, he said, هَذَا inna هَذَا Actually, he, before he said this is a test, he said this is obviously a huge blessing from Allah, a huge favor from Allah, a huge bounty from Allah. This is not from me or from any of you. All this power, Allah has the power to do anything. This is obviously from Allah. He wants to see, he's testing me to see if I'm going to be thankful or to disregard, uh, not recognize the blessings of Allah. And then Sulaiman السلام, he comments, لِيَبْلُوَنِي أَشْكُرُ أَمْ أَكْفُرُ وَمَنْ شَكَرَ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ رَبِّي غَنِيٌّ كَرِيمٌ Whoever is thankful, Allah doesn't need people to thank Him. Whoever is thankful, it's only for themselves that they are thankful. And whoever disbelieves or disregards or doesn't thank Allah or doesn't appreciate Allah, Allah doesn't need him. My master, he is free of any need. He doesn't need anybody to thank him. He is the one who gives and so generous and honors people. May Allah inspire us through the story of Dawood and Sulaiman السلام, to be thankful to Allah, recognize the blessings he has given us, appreciate the blessings and be alert not be just drowned in this world and think about money and throne and I can do this and I can do that and I have that knowledge, but to be alert and realize all of that comes from Allah. Ameen. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله على نعمة القرآن We thank Allah for the blessing of having the Quran And I'm going to try to connect this story that I just told you to all of you now and going to winter break What you heard from Suleiman's story probably connects to a lot of things that you see on the screen Superpowers Superheroes, magical powers, abilities, 
stats on your computer games or on video games or on you know, shows or whatever you have. And Hollywood knows that we like to see superpower, supernatural things, fantasy, things that look like awesome, right? So they put a lot of that. Now, this is Suleiman and Dawood, alayhim as -salam, always alert, always aware of where any blessing comes from. Did Allah say, you cannot enjoy your life? Did Allah say to Suleiman, you cannot do this? You cannot teleport a throne like this? You're not allowed to do that. Did Allah tell Suleiman, salam, you cannot have a big palace like that? It's not allowed. No. Suleiman had amazing blessings. And he could enjoy a lot of things. His palace was probably bigger than any of your houses. He had a lot of things. Allah didn't say, no, you cannot have them. Actually, Allah gave him more because he had the right attitude. Because he was alert. Because he knew that this comes from Allah. He appreciated the blessings of Allah. He wasn't drowned in this dunya. All the things I have, all the things I have, all the things I know. He was appreciative of Allah. And you can see from, this, from the few pages I told you about in Surah An-Naml, every single time, Allah, not me, not what I have, Allah. This is all a blessing from Allah, every single time. So Allah tells us in Surah Sa'd that Suleiman, one time, and this is very important for all of you going to winter break here. This is very important. One time Suleiman, he was busy with his horses. He was just a fan of horses, and, and it's okay. And Allah didn't say you cannot be a fan of horses. He was very busy inspecting his horses. Until the time for Asr kind of went further. And he realized, oh my God, it's almost Maghrib. So he got rid of all the horses. He says, no, I can't have something distract me from Allah. I cannot have something distract me from Allah. Salah on time is more important to me than any of the horses or thrones or teleporting or games or whatever it is. Salah is more important. As a result, what did Allah do? He gave him more. He gave him more. When you, tell, when you say to Allah that, Ya Allah, salah is more important. Praying salah on time is more important than any fun and entertainment that I have. Anything that I want to do that I enjoy. You tell Allah that salah is more important, what will Allah do? He will give you more to enjoy. You have to have the right mindset and the right attitude. Control your time and control your time so that you pray Salah and you give importance to Salah and you are aware and alert and realize all the blessings you have, they come from Allah. Most people are not alert. Most people don't realize that all the blessings come, come from Allah. And so Allah explains to us and may Allah protect us from being like that. فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانِ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا Most people, they don't realize it comes from Allah. They boast when they get things. They're showing off when they get things. And then they feel like they don't deserve when something bad happens to them. Because they're so drowned in this world, they don't realize Allah is there, Allah is taking care of them. May Allah protect us and make us from, this was from Surah Al-Fajr, so may Allah make us from the people at the end of Surah Al-Fajr, that Allah says, O oh people who are relaxed, who are in peace, go to Jannah, go back to your master and go to Jannah. Ameen. Rabbana adkhinna jannatak. Ameen. ربنا أوزعنا أن نشكر نعمتك التي أنعمت علينا وعلى والدينا وأن نعمل صالحا ترضاه وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين آمين. So this was the same dua in the Surah An-Naml that Suleiman said. That's the same thing I just said here. ربنا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد آمين. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأخم الصلاة.